Oh, hi! This week, we're gonna make a project that I've been putting off for years. Here's some footage of me trying to start this project. Oh, hi! Today, we're gonna make Totoro bed sheets. I don't even know who that person is anymore. Here's what you need. As this is for a Totoro themed bed, bed sheets are important. That sheet set did come with two pillowcases, which is very important. The other big thing you're gonna need is a gray body pillowcase. Get yourself an extra one because you're gonna need the fabric. And for the other accent bits, you're gonna need black and white material. Open up your scissors and pins and sewing machine. Get your matching thread. The gray pillowcase I'm using is basically faux fur once you start cutting into it, so I am gonna be using some fray check. I think that's all you need other than, you know, a bed. Perhaps a little snuggle companion. As far as the fitted sheet and the top sheet, the colors do need to match the cream colored pillows, but we're not actually going to be adding anything to those. So you can set those aside for now, preferably wash them before you put them on your bed. With some scrap paper, I made these pattern pieces. This one is kind of leafy shaped. It's going to make the ears. This is a big circle with a smaller circle to make the eyes and the pupil. This is for his little bitty nose. This boomerang looking motherfucker is for the check marks on Totoro's chest. I did two of the big circles in white. I did two of the little circles in black. Those his little eyeballs. The nose bit was in black. I did four ear pieces. And I also have seven of those little boomerang check marks. The last one I did split in half. I basically bordered everything with a little line of fray check. So I'm gonna take the fully intact body pillow, fold it out this way, fold it in half so that I can find the center point. I don't think it matters which side is the back or front, but you want the top to be the edge that has the seam on it. I'm gonna mark this with a pin and try not to stab myself. And also mark a pin on the bottom edge. Now I'm going to start laying out the nose and eye pieces. The nose piece is gonna be the easiest to place because there's only one of them. A few inches above where you have your little middle marker pin and neck eye down. Your pillow should either have just a completely open end or this one actually has a zipper. So I'm going to unzip that. Cram my giant ham fist in there and make sure these pins only go through the top layer. And now we're gonna place his cute little eyes. He's gonna be a little bit of a cross-eyed Totoro because that will just be cuter for some reason. Even though when I go cross-eyed, it's super not cute. But I'm also not a giant fluffy panda thing, so I guess I'm always going to be less endearing than Totoro. That's all right. Children fear me. That's just how I live my life. I'm going to put the whites of the eyes down first. Try to make the eyes as even as possible. Now that whites are stitched down. I haven't touched the nose yet just because I was waiting to do these so I can do all the black thread together so I don't have to re-thread the sewing machine. Now it's time to place them pupes. <laughs> I'm just going to kind of snake everything onto my machine. You want to make sure nothing else is bunching up under here so there's no double layers of fabric going under. There's going to be a lot of rotating this giant pile of fabric. Always be aware of the under layers. Constant vigilance. I'm gonna do a really narrow zigzag stitch just for aesthetics. You can do a straight stitch if that's easier for you. Now we're gonna zip this fucker through. When I'm doing something that's very curvy like this, I'll do a little section and then I'll stop with the needle down, lift up the presser foot, turn everything just a little bit, presser foot down, then stitch a little more. Now he has cute little face. Look at it. I just want to snuggle it. Now it's time to add the little bitty ears. You want to flip your pillow inside out. This is where that top seam comes into play and why it was important to have it at the top of the thing. You can see the stitching on the inside, which will be very helpful for figuring out where to position the ears. So pick two points that are equidistant from the face and mark those with pins. And then once you have your pins marked, I put one in the center and then measured out seven inches from each side. And now that those are marked out, we're going to actually assemble the ears and then we will be attaching it to the rest of the pillow. So I have four of these pieces. I'm going to take two and put them right sides together and then just do a straight stitch along this whole thing. Don't sew across the very bottom though. My ear has been stitched together. Now you want to flip it in. I'm going to push all the corners out. Now I'm going to take some of the scraps from cutting out some of these shapes and stuff this just a little bit, not so it's like bursting at the seams. Now that you've gotten both your ears to the right shape and desired puffiness. So now we go back to where your pins were. You're going to kind of measure out how wide this bottom bit of the ear is. And then you're going to unstitch that width of the top seam of your pillow your pin as like the middle marker so do a little bit to each side of it until you have a big enough space to fit that nub into it. Now that you have your little section unpicked you're gonna leave your pillow inside out. A demon just took over my voice. Yeah take your ear as is and tuck it inside the pillow. Push that open section through the gap in the seam. Now you're just gonna pin over that. 
Now it's time to flip the whole thing out and see what it looks like. I hope it's not some scary nightmare monster. Look at his little fluffy ears. You guys, it's adorable. I'm so happy it actually came out good. I've been putting this project off for so long and it's not coming out terrible and I'm so pleased. Now it is time to work on the little tummy check marks. We're gonna take one of the tan pillows. We're gonna do two whole ones on this bottom row. We're gonna take one of the halves and put it right at the very edge of the pillowcase and take one more. Once those are pinned down, you wanna take your second pillowcase, have the opening facing towards the opening of the other one and then mirror all of the check marks. Well, actually I'm thinking this little flappy part usually gets tucked over the pillow, right? Okay, so I readjusted and I'm much happier that I took the time to do that. And now we straight stitch everything on. All right, this is definitely me tooting my own horn a little bit, but as I was stitching this and finishing each step was just like, this is the best idea I've ever had. Why did it take me so long to put this together? This is coming out great and I'm so happy. This feeling I currently have is why I am obsessed with making things because it's just so fucking satisfying to get to the end of a project that you didn't completely botch and it looks even better than you expected and you did it with your hands and you have a physical thing that you have now and this will be gifted to someone so hopefully they get some joy out of it but fucking A. It's gonna revel in this very excited feeling. It could also have to do with the fact that I've had two and a half cups of coffee. I don't know if you can tell that or not. So let's put these fuckers together and see what it looks like. Um, you guys, this is maybe my proudest moment. It's so cute and my body can't handle the cuteness. Snitches get stitches, and then stitches get seam ripped.